This video is to show how the figure 8 block in canyoneering works. It works because rope is being pinched between two metal pieces and has nothing to do with rope on rope contact. To see why this is, first we'll see how ropes lock together. So we'll take this very thin rope and pass it through our quick link and we'll do a carabiner block. So just a clove hitch on a carabiner. Now this is a fully locked system. The reason that it's locked is because we have a high tension line, this diagonal, which comes from here. This is highest tension, and it comes around. There's a little bit less tension as it goes diagonal, and then there's less tension as it comes by and goes out the back. And we've got this high tension diagonal strand on top of this lower tension uh, back strand. So no matter how hard we pull, uh, we're just squeezing this low tension strand harder than we're pulling the low tension strand out. So it doesn't matter what size of rope you use, Clove hitch on a carabiner, always going to work. It's always going to be locked. Now this is on contrast to a figure eight block. If we do a figure eight block with this really thin rope, just do a standard figure eight, rig it like a figure eight, and pass another one through. So this is the standard figure eight block. This is not locked. So if we just pull on this, it just comes right through. It's different for big rope. Uh, on big rope, the figure eight block usually does lock, and this is why it works in canyoneering. So to see how it's working, let's let's make one. So we're going to pass the rope through our quick link, and this is going to be our rappel side. This is going to be our pull side. So we're going to take our figure eight, and we're going to do a standard figure eight block, and now we're set to go. So this is really good to use in contingency situations where you might want to lower someone down. So now if we pull it against the quick link. We're going to pull really hard here. It moves a little bit and then it stops. Now there's really no more movement. Now the reason that it stopped is because we have this high tension strand coming around here, going around the back, and pulling this figure eight against the quick link. So we're kind of squeezing the figure eight and quick link together and this strand, the strand that's coming down the bottom, is caught in between those two metal pieces. So when I pull down I'm squeezing this strand so it can't be pulled through the rest of the system. So if I just free this just a little bit, I'm just going to push it out. Now it's not in that groove between the figure eight and the quick link. Now this is going to move some more. So now I've got that to move just a little bit more. And now instead of this strand being caught in between the figure eight and the quick link, this strand is caught between the figure eight and the quick link. So it's, we're still squeezing the figure eight and the quick link together, but we're sandwiching this strand. So I can't really separate that strand from the figure eight and the quick link, and that's why this works so well as an anchor. But if we were able to separate those, like for instance, there was some kind of rock that separated the figure eight from the quick link, this wouldn't work at all. It has, because it has nothing to do with rope contact. It only has to do with squeezing that rope in between those two metal pieces. So to see this in action, I'm going to take a carabiner, and I'm just going to move this whole system up away from that quick link so that we no longer have that squeezing action available. So now that we no longer are squeezing the figure eight and the quick link, it comes right out. So the reason the figure eight block works has nothing to do with rope on rope contact. It only has to do with the metal pieces squeezing together and pinching and locking the rope for movement. Now this isn't to say that all anchors need to be locked in order to be safe. If we take this same little small rope and we create our figure eight block again. Now we know from before that this is just going to pull through. It doesn't have enough friction to stop the, the cord from coming through and there's nothing here that's actually locking it. So we can, we can pull that rope through really easily. But if we wanted to um, stop this with, uh, with a real block but we didn't want to lock anything, all we have to do is add another figure eight. So we'll take our rope here and we'll add one pass and then a second pass through. So now this is still a figure eight block up here so when we pull on it we know that we can still make it move. But when we get that second figure eight up to the top and it jams up against the first figure eight that's going to be more than enough actual friction to stop this anchor. 
we're going to break this rope long before we're going to actually pull friction through two of these figure eight blocks, even though it's a small cord and even though there's no locking going on. So now what I have here is a stone knot. What the stone knot does is it isolates both strands, so I can rappel on this strand and I can rappel on this strand. And uh, that allows big groups to go fast because you can have someone rigging on this strand while someone's rappelling on this strand. And they switch, someone rappels on this strand and someone rigs on this strand. So you save time by basically eliminating the rigging time from your canyoneering trip. And then when everybody's done, the last person just takes off the carabiner. And the whole system falls apart almost instantly. Now the disadvantage of that is that both is that it's a static block. Uh, if someone gets stuck, then you have to rig some kind of system to lift the weight off of the block, take the block off, and then uh, lower the person after the weight is off the block. So another rigging system that's possible to use is called a joker. So if you get a, a, a quick draw and you put two figure eights on it and you oppose them with Mickey ears, you take one strand, put it around like it's just uh, being rigged as a figure eight, another strand rigged around like it's figure eight. Then this, the idea of this is to accomplish the same thing, is to isolate both strands so that uh, one person can be rappelling while the other person is rigging, but then also it's releasable in both directions. So if someone's rappelling here and he gets stuck, all someone has to do is take this strand off, and you'll be, and you can, you can just pull it off even when the strand's weighted, and then belay the person down like that. However, this system is not locked, and if, uh, to see that, we just rig it up like this, pull on this side. And it comes right through. But lots of people use this successfully. And the reason that they can use this successfully is because they choose the right sized rope to fit in and have the right amount of friction with these two figure eights. It's like we saw with the two figure eight blocks on the small diameter rope. If you have enough friction, it doesn't matter if it's locked. It just matters if you have enough friction to overcome the forces that are on the rope.